Hi everybody, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be discussing solar. It's not particularly sunny out, but it's bright. As a result, I'm squinting at the camera. It's kind of hard and difficult to do. So, on with it. I've seen a hundred videos, a thousand videos, a million. No, wait, hang on a second. My mother always told me, don't exaggerate. What does she used to say? Oh yeah, if I've told you once, I've told you a million times. Don't exaggerate. Anyway, never sunk in. There are lots of videos on solar out there. However, um, there's no magic bullet. There's no simple answer. The simple answer is there is no answer. Everybody's solar panel requirements are going to be different. Each van is going to be laid out differently. As it turns out, I had to buy a specific size solar panel to fit between the two roof vents on the roof. I've got a particular type of solar controller and that is set up for this van i'll give you the link in the description below to the solar panel the controller and also a link to the roof lights so you can if you wanted to replicate this setup you can put in the two roof lights and that solar panel now this particular van build this is a an l4 or an extra long wheelbase Peugeot boxer uh citroen relay fiat Ducato. so it's basically it's four meters from the bulkhead to the back doors that setup that I have now that we're going to go through and install works perfectly in this van. It may not work in other vans. You may have to reconfigure it. But in this situation, we've got the two roof lights and we'll have the solar panel in the middle of the roof lights. I'm going to connect up the controller, connect the controller to the battery and go through settings. What type of batteries are best worked with solar? What type of options you have? Um, and please feel free to ask as many questions as you want in the comment section below leave a comment if i get something wrong please correct me i have absolutely no problem in being wrong karen would disagree with that however it's this is going to be a nice simple straightforward video on installing the solar panel from start to finish so let's get to it the reason i've chosen this one is is it's slightly shorter than standard panels which i shall demonstrate for you now at a tape measure our panel is 1480 and it's 990 in width so that's going to fit perfectly in between the roof lights up on the roof and to control that we're using the victron smart charge controller it's an mppt 120 so it's maximum of 100 volts and 20 amps beautiful thing about this one is is it comes with its own built-in Bluetooth dongle. So we basically need to get solar panel. Up there! Cleaner, scrubbers the whole lot. Made a big mistake. Well, it's not a big mistake, it's a painful mistake. I don't know whether you can see here all the rust. Here comes the dog. Um, all that is basically filings from where i was drilling there's no rust on the roof of the van it's just all of those have gone rusty but if i leave them there they could get worse so big tip brush blow get rid of all your metal filings or you'll be up on the roof like me scrubbing the rust off and getting the metal filings out oh the top of the door rail is miserable i have to get up and clean that this one's for you, Dermot. You know who you are. Yeah, that's a bit better, isn't it? So on test, we've got the solar panel on the ground and we've got the cables here coming into the back of the van. What we're going to do is we're going to use this. Nice two-way gland. Glue it down. Let's see if we can see this a bit better. So yeah, it's a nice two-way gland, aerodynamically shaped. So this is facing the front of the van. Solar panels will go through there. Solar cables will go through there. Tighten them down. That'll do nicely. And then around here you can see there's a nice lip all the way around for us to use some of our Magic Tech 7 product to stick this onto the roof of the van. In case anybody was wondering, that's Babs. And she signed a waiver so I don't have to pay her. These are going to be stuck to the roof of the van using our Magic Tech 7 product. 
Right, so tensile strength, 370 newtons per centimeter squared. Let's put up a calculation in real terms. So here we are up on the roof. Let's make sure this solar panel fits and let's get mounting it. See if we can get a better view of this. Okay, so I'm just going to mark the positions of the, the brackets. So I can attach my adhesive. Time for a bit of a rethink. What I've noticed uh, and please most of the flat earth theory people is that the roof itself is not actually pure flat so we've got a bit of movement in the brackets we've got the flat earth theory has gone out the window roof is not flat it's profiled and it curves over the top. So what I'm going to do on a flat surface, I'm going to attach the mounts directly to the solar panel, then bring the solar panels with the mounts up on the roof and then glue them in place. That way I know that the mounts are secured and aren't going to move when I go to put the solar panels on. Okay, I'm going to use some stainless steel bolts, washers, uh, Nylock, so there's a little piece of nylon inside there that deforms when you run the bolt through it Doesn't undo unless you put a lot of force on it Stops them coming loose. These are M4s. They're plenty big Drill a hole straight through there through the panel and mount it I want to go a bit low to make sure that I don't catch the back of the panel Or to catch the actual solar array itself So there we are First corner bracket mounted, bolted on with stainless steel nuts and bolts, not going to rust, and nice and discreet, but very, very strong. We've got the six mounting feet bolted onto the frame with the stainless steel bolts. All we need to do now is get up on the roof, position the entry gland, feed the cables through, and then stick the panel down. Okay, so there's some specs on the back of the solar panel. One of the things we've noticed is, is that that's the negative wire, but when we come down here to easily identify which is which, I'm going to wrap a bit of red masking tape around the positive, so it's easy to identify when it's up on the roof. Now, straight away, at a quick glance, we know which is positive and which is negative, red and black. So, up on the roof now again, and we need to mark our cable entry gland spot here. Now that sits on the roof, but I'm going to pack that with adhesive uh, sealant, our Tech 7 again, and that's going to make a nice tight seal, and then we'll use the back of it to run the cables in. So we'll drill a hole here and bring the cables in that way. So basically when you look up on the roof of the camper, you won't see any cabling at all. It'll all be hidden under the solar panel. I've drilled a hole for the cable entry into the van, and I've put a rubber grommet around where I've drilled. Uh, if we can get a good view of that. Yeah, there we go. So that means that 
the cable isn't going to get damaged on the sharp metal where we've drilled the hole. So underneath I've got the gland, I've got the cables coming out, we've got our two cable ends and we've got our two ends from the solar panel. So I'm just going to bring them around underneath, tuck them in, put a little clip underneath there, join them together and we should be good to go. This, this is a cable organising set. Um, these are an Aldi one but I'll put a link in the description for uh, a generic one you can buy on eBay. But this is what we're going to do. So the kit comes with these guys. They're little cable clips. And I'm going to use some of these on the back of the solar panel to keep the solar wires from flapping on the back of the panel. So, here we go. So, there we have our little clip. There's our two other ends. So we're gonna get them now, fit those up there like that and connect them. So, I'm not gonna be able to film this and do it at the same time, so I'm just gonna there we are, going from the gland up to the connectors. Now you'll see there, quite conveniently, I marked that red with a bit of red insulation tape and I also put a bit of red insulation tape on the other end that goes into the controller. That way I know what wire is what because the two ends come bare, there's no connectors on the end of them. So just to make sure we have them right. And then I've got my little clip there, there, so take those back as far as we need to go and then tighten up the gland. We're now in, I'm waterproof. All I need to do now is stick the panel down. So we're gonna go for our trusty Tech 7. I've got it lifted up on two sides here. So I'm gonna to have to do this a couple of different ways just to make sure I'm gonna support it with this bit of foam to make sure that I've got plenty of space underneath it to stick the Tech 7. I have the lines drawn there you can see them so that's my guide so I know where it's going and then just a tiny little bit of fettling at the end just to get everything dead right and in case anybody's wondering I did dry fit it and the top bottom of the solar panel does clear the gland by a good bit so there's no risk risk of it hitting off it so before I connected that this is our controller so we connect positive and negative from the battery, positive and negative from the solar panel, and it is actually into the positive one. Um, that way then I knew when I connected the solar panel, we weren't gonna get any problems. No short circuits, that's why I connected the positive. If the negative had hit off anything, it would have hit off any, any of the earth on the way down, so it wouldn't have made any difference. So I'm gonna connect this solar panel. I'm gonna connect this solar controller. Before I do so, I'm just gonna turn everything off, isolate the battery. Using my fuse breaker down here, my little breaker, and just pop that. You'll see it popped up and everything's gone dead. So it's not under load. So I'm not trying to connect this thing under a massive load. So we're going to put our Tech 7 under here, there, and down below. And same on the other side of the solar panel up on some 2 inch foam insulation to keep the mounts up off the ground. And then we'll be ready to stick them in. So I'm going to put them Tech 7. It's too awkward up here, it's too dangerous on the roof, so I'm just going to put the Tech 7 on, drop it down, and then show you what it looks like. Okay, so just having a quick look at our battery monitor, 13.1 volts coming in. Uh, we have a half an amp, 540 milliamps, 0.7 of a watt, that's just being drawn on controllers, all that sort of stuff. We have solar connected, and we're charging about 65, 70 watts. And it's not particularly sunny out. Um... It's a particularly grey day, but if we get a boost of sunshine out, hopefully I'll be able to come back to the solar panel and just see if we're just going to take a couple more screen grabs off the Bluetooth. So this is all test set up, so everything's a complete mess. It's not mounted. Uh, it's all just temporarily set up to make sure that everything's good before we're going. So basically this is our MPPT controller. It's uh, 120, 100 volts, 20 amps. Uh, so simple, red wire from a battery, black wire from a battery, positive and negative, positive and negative feed down from the control panel on the back of the solar panel, and it's charging. 
Got a couple of little LEDs there for quick reference. So blue is on bulk charge, yellow is on absorption charge, and then green is on float. Three states of charge, very, very simple. So a big thank you to everybody. We broke the 500 subscriber mark, uh, which I couldn't believe. Views are coming along nicely. So I'd like to say a huge thank you to everybody who's subs subscribed. Um, if you haven't hit the notification bell to get notified when we put up a new video, please consider clicking it now. And uh, don't forget to like the videos when you watch them. It really appreciate. We really appreciate it and it helps a lot. And there we have it. Solar panels installed. The stuff on the roof is going off, our Tech 7. It's nice and sunny. So you can see here in this photograph, we're getting quite a bit of solar. All looking really, really good. We're on bulk charge. Um, and short while it's going to switch over to absorption charge which basically means is, is that the batteries are nearly full and it's just setting them up for to switch over to float charge which basically keeps the batteries maintained thanks for watching uh maybe you give a thumbs up if you like it uh maybe you consider subscribing and there's a couple more videos for you to check out see you later